Thank you for joining us for the next Small Business Development Series webinar. The Small Business Development Series is provided by the District in Quincy, Illinois, through a grant provided by the Illinois Main Street. The purpose is to provide entrepreneurs and small business owners tools that will help them improve their business and resources that can help them expand their knowledge and create more sales. Today, we're going to talk about technology in your business. We're going to go over some tools, tips, and tricks that will help you get the most out of technology that can benefit your business. My name is Travis Brown. I'm the Director of Business Development for Recusic Design here in Quincy. As a marketing communications firm, technology is critical to our business, and we know it is to most every business. Today we're going to talk about a number of ways that you can improve your technology in your business and hopefully further advance your whatever it is that you sell. The first thing we're going to talk about is hardware. Do you have a Mac or a PC? Does it matter? Yes, it matters. I can't tell you one's better than the other. Really, it is going to depend on what your software is. And that's the next question. Is make sure whatever you're getting is going to be compatible. Some people really like Mac, but Mac doesn't offer certain programs that some businesses find essential. Same is true for the PC. If you've got something that is very Mac specific, making sure that you've got a Mac computer or Mac device that can operate that is going to be very important. Some other things that you'll need to consider is how you might network. What's the networking and integration? I have found personally that Macs are far easier to connect and to network than our PCs, but PCs sometimes offer like I said, a number of programs that are not available to a Mac user. Um, other things you might want to consider are how do you collect payments? All of these are factors that are going to help you determine what hardware is best for you. There's a lot of hardware besides Mac or PC. Some of you may need a point of sale system. Some of you may have far more uh, elaborate pieces of, of hardware that are going to be necessary. Credit card terminals and, and a number of others that are going to be important for you to consider when you're utilize when we're talking about technology in your business. On the software side of things, you're again going to want to make sure that it's compatible with your hardware. I can't stress this enough. I've seen so many businesses see a great program and only to realize that it doesn't meet with their hardware or vice versa. They get a new computer and don't realize that their software doesn't transfer and they're left in limbo waiting for something to give so that they can afford to bring everything up to date. Make sure you're doing your homework ahead of time before any purchase and make sure that everything's going to network and integrate the way you desire. Do you have business specific needs? As an example, we're a graphics design firm. We have very specific software uh, that we need to have on hand in order to effectively and efficiently do our jobs. Um, the other software that you might want to consider, how do you handle tracking your inventory, sales, payroll? What types of software is your business using? What software are you going to need and what hardware are you going to need? With compatibility, there's a number of things to consider. Do you collaborate with mobile devices or is this just going to be an online collaboration? Is it a networked communication? How are your devices going to talk to one another? Maybe you're a standalone business or a, a one-man shop and you don't need to worry about integrating with other devices. But for a number of businesses, this is a reality that needs to be addressed from the start. You need to be able to make sure that your devices connect to one another. Um, some devices may not be connected. As an example, I mentioned that we're a graphic design and marketing communications firm. We're obviously very heavy on Macs in our office. However, our bookkeeper uses a PC because of the computer software that she is using. She does not need to integrate with the rest of the team. So she has her own kind of universal system or her own uh, island or siloed system there. So those are all things that you need to consider. One of the things that I wanted to talk about today are some tech tools. These are things that I've found very useful in the past um, and things that help us either today or or in previous stops along the way. 
Uh, one is the Adobe Creative Suite. Now, you may be saying Adobe Creative Marketing and Communications Firm. Sure. But I can tell you from even being in a nonprofit, having Adobe was very, very helpful. Uh, sometimes just the Photoshop elements and being able to quickly manipulate a picture or resize or put layers or, or text onto pictures so that I could put them on my website without having to utilize the services of a graphic design firm. Um, being able to convert uh, PDF files, which is really critical in saving space and time and providing documents in a format that is fairly universally uh, accepted. Those are really important tools that you may need for your business. Um, another one that I'm pretty sure almost everybody's heard of is Dropbox. Dropbox is a great file sharing program. Uh, for some businesses, it can almost act as a as a backup server, depending on what you're storing, how sensitive the information is, who you're sharing it with. But Dropbox is a great tool. Um, they have certain amount of space for free, and they've recently just upped their number of of or their amount of space available for businesses. Now a business can have up to a terabyte of space for around a hundred dollars a year, which is an awful lot of space for and most businesses won't come close to utilizing that amount of data. Um, the other one is Constant Contact or MailChimp. These are some great tools. MailChimp is free until you get to a certain number of, of clients or customers. Constant Contact is a paid service and paid based on the amount of customers. These are great for mass communications from your business. Even if you're a service-based business and you're not necessarily trying to generate sales, being top of mind is very important. With MailChimp and Contact, it's more than just your day-to-day -day emails. These services give you some great professional looks so that you're able to really communicate and, and track affection of your, your message. How effectively am I reaching my customers? What's engaging them? What are they clicking on? How much are they opening? And it really helps you track your customer engagement and really will help you generate more leads and sales as you continue to utilize them. A few others, Doodle. Uh, if you haven't heard of Doodle and you go to meetings or you schedule a lot of meetings, Doodle will become your new best friend. Doodle is a great free service that enables you to send a link to an, any number of people that you need. They can click on the link and it takes them to the Doodle site. From there, without having to create a user ID, they can add their avail availability to whatever poll or scheduler you're trying to create. So if you have 15 people that need to set them, you need to set a meeting that involves 15 people. You can email them the same link and rather than trying to track an email chain a mile long or trace one email or track down one last person to get this meeting scheduled, they can all log on 24 hours a day and, and do their put in what their availability is, which enables you to set a meeting much more efficiently. Defont is another great tool that I really like. This has gotten, uh, you know, with me through a lot of, of <laughs> not hairy moments, but Defont is a great option for anybody that is looking for a specific font. Um, they're all free to download, and it really lets you kind of take your publications to the next level by getting very in-depth with what you're doing. Um, this was one that I really, really utilized a lot uh, in previous stops uh, in my career, and that's Sign Up Genius. Sign Up Genius is great whether you're looking for looking for businesses or looking for customers to sign up for your availability for a giveaway or you're having certain office hours and you need you know, you've only got three slots left people can sign up at theirs their convenience through sign up genius the way it works is you log in create an account and it's all free and you can put your event so let's just say you're a main street organization and you're hosting a block party. You can log on and say, I need three people to man the gate and two people to man the 
soda fountain and eight people to take food orders and three people to man the grill from five to seven and the other shift is seven to nine. And I can send out one link to my entire list of, of contacts and they can log on and click the availability and take a spot. What this does is rather than having to continually update one spreadsheet and send it to a number of people or one form and send this out, everybody can see instantaneously what spots are available, what spots are taken, and it lets them sign up without having to run through a centralized office or a point person. So it enables them to sign up much more efficiently. It also gets you their contact information, so email, phone number, or what other information you desire. Maybe it's it's uh, t-shirt size because everybody's volunteers gets a free t-shirt. This enables you to utilize that and really makes your scheduling of events and large groups of people that have a number of different job functions very very easy. So a couple other tips. Use social media intelligently. Um, a good rule of thumb here is if you wouldn't want your grandmother to read it don't put it on social media. Um, but also, don't just shoot in the dark. Give people a genuine look as to what your business is. Maybe for some businesses, Instagram is a great tool. Uh, for other businesses, it might be Twitter or Facebook. Really, just kind of figure out what your customers are utilizing and what fits your business best, and then utilize that. Um, continue to cultivate your online image. What I mean by this is make sure your online image matches reality. If you've got a upscale restaurant with fine dining and white tablecloths and very high end, you don't want a image of something that doesn't reflect that on your Facebook or on your website. You really want to make sure that the impression that you're giving online matches what people are going to experience when they walk through your front door. Another tip is to check out what your competitors are doing. It may sound simple, but oftentimes it's an overlooked step. You want to make sure that you're either not copying them or maybe they're doing something that's very successful that you could adapt to fit your business. Another thing when we're talking about websites, whether it be social media or your own website, is don't be afraid of negativity. I can't tell you the number of times that a negative post has actually generated more positive comments and positive feedback from clients than had they not posted that. It gives you an opportunity to engage the conversation, which is critical from the start. You can't address a problem as a business owner if you don't know that there's a problem that needs to be addressed. So approach every negative comment or negativity in a situation from a positive angle. The other thing that you can do is if you're providing great customer service and you have a lot of raving fans, those negative comments will be thwarted by the positive comments and your customers will actually rise to your defense sometimes before you have even had an opportunity to see the comment or see the post. And so don't be afraid of negativity. Don't hesitate to turn your comment section on or to allow people to post to your wall because the more you engage with your clients and your customers, the better your business is going to succeed. Even those few that might be a little negative will be overwhelmed by the vast majority who are positive, and so don't be afraid of that negativity. We could talk all day, but we want to make sure that we're cognizant of everyone's time, so I want to thank you for tuning into this webinar series. Again, my name is Travis Brown. I'm the Director of Business Development for Recusic Design. Our contact information is there on the screen, and we're always here to help if anyone has any questions or any marketing communication needs. Again, we want to thank the district for making the Small Business Development Series possible, and we want to thank Illinois Main Street for the grant that made this series possible. We hope that you come back for the entire list of small business development series webinars, and we thank you for your time.